In today's episode, we finish up in Moab before we get on I-70 East and head towards colorful Colorado. We'll stop off for some beers in Grand Junction before heading to the ski town known as Vail, Colorado. We get to see some of the snow that we've been chasing as well as seeing some wildlife off the side of the highway. And finally, we drive down to Colorado Springs to see Garden of the Gods. All this and more coming up next. Good morning. We have uh, finished our night in Moab, so we're heading up to Grand Junction and just gonna do some driving today. We're not really gonna go camping or hiking or anything like that, so um, but we're gonna get some breakfast, um, get some coffee or whatever, and hit, hit, uh, hit up the road. Main thing today, we want to see some snow, so we have a Californian in our group who's never seen snow before, so that's not entirely true, but you know. So yeah, so we're gonna do some driving today. Probably not much in the way of exciting adventures, but it would be nice to have a chill day for once, so yeah. First, we got some pictures in front of the Moab mural, and then got some breakfast at Jailhouse Cafe. Pretty good food. Well, we decided to eat here at the uh, Jailhouse Cafe instead, so why not? After a nice filling breakfast, it's time to hit the road towards Colorado. Right now, the plan is to hit up Grand Junction and then make our way south towards the Four Corners. At this point, we're just hoping to get a nice glimpse of snow before we head back down south. And this marks off a day which is pretty much a travel day. We did do a couple stops along the way, but for the most part, we spent a lot of time in the Jeep. So kick back, relax, and enjoy the ride through Colorado. One thing that has to be said is we were definitely not prepared for the amount of weather we saw throughout this trip. Again, it is early September and in the southwest it's pretty dry around this time of the year, so we were still expecting some sunny and somewhat pleasant temperatures. But the one thing we didn't take into account is the effect that the mountains have on weather. It really makes things unpredictable. And after a little bit of time on the road, we finally made it to Colorado. We've made it to Colorado. Oh yeah, there's the sign. It's actually really cool. Currently I'm in Utah. Turning around. Now I'm in Colorado. I just crossed states three times. Now that we got our pictures, we're heading east towards Grand Junction, Colorado. I'd be lying if I told you Colorado wasn't one of my favorite places in the country. The mountains and the scenery is just something you'll have to see to believe. Company in uh, Colorado, no, Grand Canyon, Grand, 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 Junction. Grand Junction. Grand Junction. So we That's have a, a blonde, and I don't know what he got. I think he got a Kolsch. Got an mm -hmm. Pretty good. Not bad. Kolsch. Random stop. So why not? We got two growlers from Canna Creek Brewing Company. Originally, I was trying to meet up with a friend who lives in Grand Junction, but that didn't happen. But we got to get some good beer at this Canna Creek Brewing Company and see a little bit more of the town. Maybe the booze got to us a bit, but we decided to take I-70 East all the way to Denver. Originally, we were going to hang south towards the Four Corners, but we decided, hey, we're here. We might as well just go for it. Well, now it's time to get back on the interstate and head east towards the ski resort town known as Vail. In case you've been living under a rock, Colorado is one of the most popular ski places in the entire world. 
and the state definitely isn't lacking in ski towns and mountain villages. Interstate 70 through Colorado was also commonly known as the Million Dollar Highway. Here you can see some of the most spectacular scenic views in the entire U.S. interstate system. I-70 carves through the mountainous terrain of Colorado and as well as follows the Colorado River which will end up carving out the Grand Canyon. Tell you what, the first time I went through I-70 the summer before was definitely one of the coolest experiences of my life. Just seeing all the nature and the mountains and everything in between was pretty cool. And at the time there was a lot of snow in the mountains which gave it an even more awesome feel. There was one really weird thing about driving through this state and that was the amount of birds that ended up flying into our windshield on the freeway. I'm not really sure what it is with the birds in Colorado, but they really seemed to enjoy going across the freeway as we were driving through it. Yeah, definitely really strange and it only happened as soon as we hit Colorado state lines. I'm not sure what drugs the birds are on in Colorado, but if you have any insight, please leave a comment in the comment section and let me know just what the heck is going on. And on the right, you can see the mighty Colorado River. The Colorado River is 1,450 miles long and it flows through seven states. It also acts as a natural border between Arizona and California. can't even escape traffic out here on the mountains, but I guess this isn't the worst place to be stuck. And here's another one of the many tunnels that carves through the mountains here on the freeway. As we exit the tunnel, we're approaching Vail, Colorado, so we're going to look for parking, get out, and give a little walk around the town and see what all the fuss is about. We're at Vail Village in Vail, Colorado. You can see there's ski slopes, but obviously it's uh, summertime. Nobody's skiing right now. I missed out on uh, snow. I kind of expect to see some snow, but none to be seen anywhere to be found. That's fine. Ski Trooper. He will become an eagle among the- The Ski Trooper Monument originally stood near the entrance to Ski Cooper on Tennessee Mountain Pass. This is the area where the 10th Mountain Division trained during World War II. It was later moved to Vail to improve accessibility for those who wish to honor these brave soldiers.
Coming up ahead is the Johnson Tunnel at the Continental Divide. This marks the highest point in the U.S. interstate system at over 11,000 feet. 11,112 feet to be exact. While it's just one structure, there's actually two different tunnels that go over the Continental Divide. The Johnson Tunnel runs eastbound to I-70, while the Eisenhower Tunnel runs westbound. The Johnson Tunnel was named after Edwin C. Johnson, a past governor and U.S. Senator who had actively supported an interstate highway system across Colorado. The Johnson Tunnel was completed on December 21, 1979, while the Eisenhower Tunnel was completed in 1973. In a nutshell, the Continental Divide separates where the water drains in North America. All water east of the Divide eventually ends up in the Atlantic Ocean, while anything west surprisingly ends up in the Pacific Ocean. Crazy stuff, huh? Let's get off the highway here and enjoy the sights of the snow-covered mountains. It's still crazy to think that just a couple days ago, it was 114 degrees in Zion, and man was it hot. And we continue heading east on I-70 towards Denver. Well, you can't see it here, but we saw a bunch of buffalo and maybe some elk or moose or whatever on the left side of the road. We also saw a bunch of cars parked on the side of the highway, so we figured let's just turn around and see what the commotion is. Oh. Let me go this way. Oh, I forgot these shoes have holes in them. Yeah, definitely not one of my brightest ideas. Embarrassingly, the bottom of my shoes were kind of falling apart at this point. So yeah, I had mud all over my socks. Look at the sign. Stay at least three feet away from fence. Oh, and then more. people. Right on. <sighs> Forgot I mean, these shoes. If they charge the fence, it's not going to hold it back too much. I don't and there's a baby right there. some elk and some bison. Last time I came here I did not see a moose. Still haven't seen a moose but maybe next time. Maybe next time. Yeah I definitely didn't follow the advice of the sign either because I did get pretty close to the fence but it was well worth it. Now it's time to walk back to the car and finish that last home stretch into Denver. Well, about an hour or so later, we made it into downtown Denver. We went to the Capitol and took a couple pictures and found a place to stay for the night. A friend of mine came all the way from Wyoming to have dinner with us that night. It was a good time to catch up and reminisce on the old days. Now we're taking I-25 south out of Denver into Colorado Springs. Our next stop, Garden of the Gods. Now 
after about an hour and a half of driving, we've arrived. Garden of the Gods is pretty much a walkable rock garden. None of the hikes here are very difficult, if there are any hikes at all. It's mostly just a paved road with some places you can go and explore some of the rocks. If you're ambitious, you can get a climbing permit and scale some of the rocks yourself. I think you do have to have a guide though. Or at least, bare minimum, a permit. Watching on his mouth. I look weird. You gotta get the photo right. Oh, it's back a little more. A little more. Now Tommy, have, what are you doing? Now look at the dew on the trees. Just. Hey, Tony, climb up there. Easy. The rocks look dry. And here is Garden of the Gods' own version of Balanced Rock. As you can see, it's pretty crowded and people are kind of just walking all over the place, even in the middle of the street. And now we are on the way to Great Sand Dunes National Park. In order to get there, we'll have to pass through a couple mountain passes, which should be a pretty nice drive after all the snow. And that will end it for today's episode on this Southwest Loop Road Trip. In the next episode, we'll be checking out the Great Sand Dunes National Park and seeing what else Colorado has to offer. Thank you so much for tuning in to today's episode. If you liked it, please subscribe to the channel and leave a comment and tell me what was your favorite part of the episode. Until then, take care and keep on adventuring. See you later.